Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today I want to invite you into my kitchen to spend a little bit of time prepping some food, making dinner, and baking up some homemade sourdough bagels. On this particular day, I had a couple of recipes that I wanted to make, and the first was sourdough bagels. But to make sourdough bagels, I first have to feed my sourdough starter. So I just pulled it out of the refrigerator, and I'm going to feed it. And I am not precise at all when it comes to feeding my sourdough starter. You'll see I'm just going to add some flour, add some water, give it a stir, and I actually go by consistency. So if it's a really thick, like, pancake batter consistency then it's good to go. Uh, if you want really precise measurements this is really not the place to get them. I'm sorry to disappoint um, but I like things to be easy and this is easy for me and it works every time. Now in the future maybe I'll get more into it um, but for now this is what it is. So I've got it to the consistency that I want. I'm going to go ahead and cover it up and leave it on the counter the whole day. Uh, I think this is about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning and then I'll get to it tonight after the kids go to bed and I'll have a little bit more time. The next thing I wanted to do was roast a chicken. I love doing this. Uh, I make it super easy. Uh, just add a couple of things, throw it in the oven for a couple hours and you're good to go. Usually I can get two to three meals out of one chicken, which is a pretty good bargain. I think the whole chickens are going for around seven, eight dollars at Walmart. I get the, it's not the name brand, but whatever. Uh, it's not organic. Uh, I wish that I could afford that, but unfortunately, uh, that's just not something that's in the budget. So I go with this. It works well. Uh, so what I do is I just get it out of the package and then I'm using my 12 inch dual handle cast iron pan. I absolutely love it. I can have it linked down below if you want to. It's just from Lodge. Um, if you haven't gotten into cast iron, let me know if you have questions or if you want me to do a video. I have been planning for years to do a video and I just, I don't know, I just kind of procrastinate on that. So I'd love to share more if you're interested. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, but I've got my chicken in the pan. I don't remove the gizzard or anything that's stuffed inside because I don't really want to touch it that much. I'm not grossed out necessarily, but I don't know. You can take all of those parts out if you want to. Um, and actually, if uh, your gizzard and all of that is in a plastic bag, you do need to take it out. But for these chickens, they're never in that. So I just leave it in. It's not like we're going to eat it anyway. Um, I just add a little bit of olive oil, salt, um, usually pepper, or I'm using this Van Pepper seasoning blend from Fresh Jacks, which I'm going to leave linked down below because they're amazing. Um, it is an affiliate link, but I absolutely love them and I will be purchasing more to replenish my stash um, when I'm out because they're great. Uh, the chicken I'm just roasting at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about two hours or until it reaches an internal temperature of 165 um, and then it's good to go. So while that's in the oven, I'm going to get some date soaking. Uh, we are going to make some cherry pie date balls. They're amazing. They help curb my sweet tooth. Um, and the first step is getting some pitted medjool dates soaking in some boiling water. We're going to soak them for about five minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to go over to the food processor and get some cherries in there. Uh, these are just dried cherries. I got them at Walmart. You could use any kind of dried fruit that you wanted to. I just really like the flavor of the dried cherries, uh, but you could use cranberries, dried blueberries, I don't know what else, whatever else you can find or that you enjoy. Um, but I'm going to get about a third of a cup of the dried cherries and then about a cup of some walnuts. I've also made these with almonds. You could probably do pecans. Um, yeah, this is really versatile. So whatever you've got on hand, use. Then I like to add some cinnamon and a little bit of vanilla. I didn't have vanilla on this day I ran out, uh, so I didn't put that in there, but normally I would, and then a little bit of salt and some nutmeg. Uh, but again, choose whatever seasonings or spices you like. Uh, that's just what I like to add. And then we're gonna put in the dates that have been soaking. Um, it just softens them up and makes it easier to blend them. Uh, it's about two cups of dates 
but I just use a package that I had shown and that is a perfect amount. We're gonna get them blended up in the food processor. And if you notice that they're not blending quite as well as you want to, you can add a little bit of the water that the dates were soaking in uh, and that can loosen things up and get them all nice and mixed. And then all I do is use a small cookie scoop and scoop them out into a bowl or whatever, a container. Um, you don't have to roll them into bowls the rest of the way if you don't want to. I do for no real reason other than I want to. Uh, so just showing you here, getting them scooped out with a cookie scoop and then they can be stored in the container. I have stored them on the um, counter, but I stored them in the refrigerator this time because they have some water in them. So I just want to be safe, I guess. Um, so store them in the refrigerator. Uh, it's debatable whether your kids will like these or not. My kids are a little bit freaked out about how they look, uh, but I think they're delicious. They're really nice and sweet. They're naturally sweet. They don't have any added sugar. Uh, the dates sweeten them really well, and so do the cherries. So I think they're a wonderful snack, and if nothing else, they can be a snack for you, especially if you have a sweet tooth. They are great for dessert or, you know, if you've got a craving. Use those, and uh, you'll feel better about it. Anyway. Now, this is later on after we made the date balls and this has been cooking for about two hours. Just testing the temperature to make sure that it is at 165. I recommend doing it in the breast of the chicken um, just because that's where most of the meat is. Uh, but yeah, I let it sit for a few hours. Well, I don't know. I don't know, I was doing other things, but I let it sit and cool so that I could handle it. And then I, I'm not precise, but I just get in there and shred it all up and put it in a plastic bag or whatever container I have. And then I have chicken prepped for the rest of the week. I do like to buy frozen chicken breasts. Um, sometimes I'll get rotisserie chicken, but either a rotisserie or roasting your own chicken really is the best way to go because then you've already got shredded chicken and you can just throw it into meals and it is really a nice meal prep type hack where you're not prepping all these kinds of meals but at least having your protein prepped is really big for me and it helps get dinner on the table much much quicker um this time i was really good about cleaning my cast iron right after i used it sometimes i'll let it sit for a day not proud of it but hey we're human and we get busy and sometimes even lazy so i'm getting my pan nice and clean and then we're going to move on to dinner now, something that I've been really trying to be more intentional with is creating meals that are high in protein and healthier versions of what we love. Um, when it comes to eating healthier, uh, I find it really difficult to accommodate my whole family because my husband and I will eat more a variety than my children will. If you have kids that are a little bit on the pickier side, you will understand what I'm saying. So I've been trying to come up with meals that everybody will love but are better for us, lower in calorie, but still, you know, nourishing and healthy and filling for everybody. Um, and I've been doing a lot of sheet pan meals and this one is so good. Um, we love pizza, of course, and a lot of times I make my own pizza crust. It's delicious, and I'm definitely not going to stop making that. But for something really quick where I don't have to have dough rising, um, I can just get dinner on the table really quickly, this is a great hack. So what I do is I use the lavash bread. I think that's how you call it or what you call it, um, and it's just like a flat bread. Uh, they come in, I think, four sheets, and so I kind of hobble together sheets that will fit my pans. I do two pans worth, um, and what I do is I take some butter, melt it, and add a little bit of garlic, and then rub that on the flatbread, and that adds so much flavor and makes these just almost like takeout. They're like thin crust pizzas that you would get out, uh, but if you want a way to involve your children, uh, in the cooking process, this step is really great. Um, my youngest daughter had so much fun painting on the butter onto the crust. Um, so that's one way you can get kids involved. Um, but we're going to get them in the oven at 375 for about five minutes. This just crisps up those flatbreads a little bit. Um, and then we can add our toppings. 
I keep it really simple with the toppings. We are going to do sauce and I just use pasta sauce. I don't know. I don't buy pizza sauce. I have in the past, but I'm just using what I've got on hand and it's not as thick, but we don't really mind and the flavor is good. So another hack, I don't know, you don't have to uh, get pizza sauce and certainly don't spill it all over your flatbread like I did. Uh, but anyway, get the sauce spread all over and then I'm using some turkey pepperoni and then I buy the bacon bits or bacon pieces from Walmart. They're real bacon. It's probably not the best for you, but again, if we're getting meals on the table really quickly, this is something that I like to have on hand for those instances. I don't love having meat that has nitrates in it, but it is what it is. Then I add some shredded cheese. Again, whatever I have on hand, I buy shredded cheese in bulk. I've gone through seasons where I shred my own cheese and just this is not the season for that and I'm okay with having shredded cheese. Here's the final result. Cut it up into rectangle pieces and everybody loves it. It's so good. Give it a try. Let me know if you like it. At this point, we are past dinner time, past bedtime for my kids, and I'm going to get my sourdough bagel dough all mixed up and ready to ferment overnight. So to make my sourdough bagels, I am taking one cup of active sourdough starter, one cup of warm water, two tablespoons of honey, and two teaspoons of salt. I'll get that all mixed together just using my spoon and then I add three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I use my dough hook on my KitchenAid mixer, mix it all up, and allow it to sit overnight. Uh, super simple to make. I haven't made these in a while so this was the first time that I made them in I don't know probably six plus months and I don't know why I haven't because there's just they're so good. I used to make them all the time. So I'm going to try to get back into that because they only lasted like a day and a half. We all really enjoy them. I like making you know, breakfast sandwiches out of them, but of course they're good just by themselves and that's how my kids like to eat them. Um, but I have this recipe over on my blog. I will link it down below so you can check it out. Um, but again, this is another one of those super easy sourdough uh, recipes that you don't have to be super precise about and um, they come out really well every single time. Once the dough is kneaded and it's no longer tacky and it's nice and pliable, I take it off of the dough hook and we're going to add it into a greased bowl. I like to just use my hands and kind of shape it into a nice ball. Uh, you can do this on the countertop, but I don't know. I just do it this way and it works well. Uh, into the greased bowl and then I'm putting a damp tea towel over top. Uh, just to make sure that there's no crust that forms. Um, and then I actually put this in my oven. It had been mostly cooled down from dinner, but it helped it rise much better overnight just because it was a little chillier uh, inside my house that day. This is now the next day, and you can see that the dough rose really well. I'm going to shape it into a ball, and then we'll get to cutting our bagels and shaping them. Uh, so this recipe makes eight bagels. You can always double it if you want to, um, but eight works just fine for our family. So what I like to do again is kind of shape it into a ball and then press it out very gently uh, to make a disc and then I'll use a bench scraper to cut it into eight individual pieces. If you want to be really precise, you can weigh the pieces to make sure that they're, you know, closer in size. Um, but again, I am not very precise and I don't, it doesn't bother me. If I notice one's a lot bigger than another, I just, you know, adjust accordingly. Uh, but we're just kind of cutting it like a pizza and then we'll take one little wedge and I like to 
shape it into a ball kind of like I did with you know all of the dough and then you poke a hole through it stretch it out a little bit and add it on to a lined baking sheet and we're going to do this for all eight of our bagels. Once you've shaped all your bagels, we're going to put the tea towel back over top and let them rest for two to three hours. After that point, I bring a huge pot of water to a boil and then add two tablespoons of uh, brown sugar and one tablespoon of baking soda, and we're going to boil our bagels. So take two to three bagels at a time, get them in the water, and boil them on each side for about one to two minutes. Um, flipping in between obviously, and then placing them back onto the lined baking sheet. Once you've boiled them, that is the point where you can add your seasonings um, and different things like that. We put everything bagel seasoning. In our house we call it bagling seasoning because that's what my youngest daughter called it for the longest time. So everything bagling seasoning can go on top. Uh, you could do cinnamon, you could do cheese, whatever your heart desires. Go ahead and add that on to your bagels. And then once everything is boiled and ready to go, you will bake them at 425 degrees for about 25 minutes and they will come out absolutely beautiful and golden brown and crispy on the outside and nice and moist and soft on the inside. Like I said, these are absolutely delightful. You can customize the flavor however you want to. Uh, this is another one of those Fresh Jack seasonings. It's uh, maple sugar seasoning. It's so good. Um, and my daughter wanted to put that on there. So there they are. They're absolutely beautiful and absolutely delicious. So that wraps up our day in the kitchen. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate you. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a new video. But thanks so much for being here and I hope you have a great rest of your day.